By the end of winter, I'm more and more impatient to get outside. At first, I enjoy the downtime that colder weather gives me to catch up on several projects I need to do. But when the snow begins to melt, my spirits rise and I feel a lightness in my psyche. Yes, finally, foraging time is here. I'm at a local elementary school's community garden. This is the first place I search for emerging plants because the reflective warmth from the surrounding building speeds up their growth. It's mid-March, long before the children start to cultivate anything, so probably nobody will care if I pick some early weeds. There's still snow in a few areas, but look, close to these bricks, is one of the first greens to appear as winter begins to wane, hairy bittercress. This non-native plant from Eurasia is now widespread throughout the states. Its common name is misleading because the plants aren't very hairy or bitter. Since they taste like watercress, a more appropriate name might be landcress. That's the name I'm going to call them from now on because who wants to eat something that's called hairy? Land cress is in the mustard family, which has no poisonous members. There's something about the flavor of plants in this family that I crave. Perhaps it's the combination of bitter and pungent that stimulates my taste buds, or perhaps it's my body telling me that I need this type of green to convert winter lethargy into spring energy. These small nondescript plants start out as delicate green starbursts on winter-ravaged ground and form dense mats that cover a large area. They prefer wet lawns and disturbed soils. They also appear in late fall because they're able to withstand several hard frosts. Their basal rosettes are somewhat symmetrical. They have many individual leaflets, which can be up to four inches long. Outer ones are larger than inner ones. Their radiating design is very pleasing to me, but probably not to gardeners who consider it invasive. Soon, a smooth stalk emerges from the center of the rosette. Then, almost overnight, clusters of tiny white flowers appear at the top of the stem. They have four petals, which is a typical characteristic of mustard family plants. Here's a wobbly close-up of them that I filmed with the aid of a magnifying glass. Seeds soon form in thin, toothpick-like capsules called siliques. These eventually explode and eject thousands of seeds from the mother plant. They complete their life cycle in three to four weeks and then begin the whole process over again. That's probably why so many people want to eradicate them. So why bother with these plants? Well, they're simple to collect. Just pull up a cluster, which makes it easy to weed if you feel the necessity to do so. Remove the old leaves, then separate and wash the remaining ones. They have a tendency to wilt quickly so it's a good idea to use them as soon as possible. Preparation is so quick that even the laziest cooks will rejoice. Just add the uncooked peppery leaves to salads, hummus, stir fries, and soups. Or you might want to try my version of pesto, which I call Cresto. All you have to do is substitute some land crest greens for those used in a traditional pesto recipe. Sometimes I'll combine them with other wild leaves, such as chickweed, garlic mustard, and goutweed. I also use the buds and flowers so they won't go to waste. That's one way to stop at least some of them from developing into seeds. Since there aren't many fresh greens here in Massachusetts in March, and these plants are available, why not enjoy them? If you prefer a plant with an even stronger flavor, be sure to try Landcress's cousin, Cuckoo Flower, also known as Lady Smock. 
This is my favorite member of the mustard family. Its taste is so pungent that it could be called wasabi weed. Unfortunately, it's ephemeral and lasts only a few weeks. It grows in groups and thrives in damp meadows, like this one near Smith College. When cuckoo flower leaves first come up in late April, they hide among grass and plants, which makes them difficult to find. Wait a few days until the stalks and flowers appear and they'll be easier to spot. Both young feathery leaves and broccoli-like buds are edible, as well as their pale lavender blossoms. These all go into my spring salads, since I know they won't be available for long. If you're adventurous, give these little beauties a chance.